Hi, this is Gilles, Radio Proper. You know I build a lot of antennas and I do need a good antenna analyzer. Now you've seen me using this one, which is the MR100, sold under different names and uh, different name brands, but uh, it's about the same device. Uh, it goes up to 60 megahertz, which is pretty good and for the price, uh, as long as you don't try to calibrate it, <laughs> it will serve you well. Now, my issue is that I really wanted to have a VHF, a UHF antenna analyzer. And the model I really <laughs> wished I had is the uh, Rig Expert AA600. Now, 600 is not the price, although that's just about what it costs, but it's the maximum frequency, which covers uh, up to 600 megahertz, and that's awesome. But I just couldn't justify spending the money. So what I got instead is this one. The FAA450, which is from uh, EU1KY. And this one goes up to 450 megahertz. So it does cover VHF and UHF. When you get the analyzer, it actually doesn't work on UHF. What the manual says to do is to set the parameter show hidden to 1. Configuration, and I'm going to try to find this parameter here. You can't see it, but uh, it says next parameter here. The screen isn't very clear. There we go. Show hidden, I'm going to set it to 1. Yes. Then I will set the band frequency maximum to 450 megahertz. Now you're supposed to redo the hardware calibration and there is a jumper to set to that position. Unfortunately, I can't see it, so I suspect it might be under this board. Uh, and removing it is something I just didn't want to do. And I think that's the one right here. Now why this isn't done when you buy it, I don't know. Uh, the hardware calibration has to be done anyway, so why not do it for UHF as well? Uh, nobody's going to buy a, an analyzer capable of doing UHF if it doesn't do it. And of course I need to reset the jumper which is a pain in the ass. Now I have to redo the open short calibration, but that's much easier. Uh, we just have to use one of those SMA plugs here. This one is 50 ohms, this one is a short, and this one is an open circuit. And by the way, all these adapters come with the kit, which is great. Let's scan the short now. And now we'll do the uh, 50 ohm. And at last we'll do the open circuit. And now we should have a fully functional HF to UHF antenna analyzer. So I'll try with the 50 ohm plug. And of course that should give us an SWR of 1 to 1. Uh, 1.1, that's close enough.
I want to make sure that the UHF scanning does work so we're going to scan this antenna here which is the uh, VX7R antenna which is supposed to be of course uh, VHF and UHF the way it is set. Sometimes the uh, touch screen doesn't quite work well. We'll set the band and of course I'll choose 70 centimeters. Uh, 425 plus 20, that's going to be 445, okay. All right, so <laughs> it has a 3.3 to 1 as to where you are, the whole band, which really isn't that great. As you can see, it does work pretty well and has some pretty neat features. Uh, the only issues that I have with it is that, well, the touchscreen isn't very, uh, it doesn't work that well. Sometimes you have to uh, touch uh, quite a few times before it goes to the uh, submenu, especially on the top of the screen. As you can see here also, the markings on the screen are pretty darn small, but it is nice and sharp. I really like the uh, time domain feature uh, that allows you to find where a cable is broken. <laughs> That's really useful if you have to cut it and save part of it. Being able to save the graphs from the screen as screenshots, that's really awesome for me, of course, uh, so I can use them in my videos and on my website. I also like the fact that it's uh, USB powered and uh, rechargeable with the, an 18650 cell. Now, if you decide to buy one, now, no relation to me, by the way, I have, uh, didn't receive anything from this company and I paid for this analyzer. So, but if you get one, please uh, let them know who sent you. Time will tell if this is going to be reliable enough, uh, but so far it does work well and it does everything I want it to. So, it's a keeper. Have a good one.